right? Yes. Blade is truly a callback to black exploitation films yes. and the martial arts movies that inspired it because of yeah. his origins, right? He had those really humble origins. Um, they kind of touch on those common portrayals of, of black Americans in movies, yes. especially in the nineties, but then he's a superhero. Mm -hmm. he, he is a, he is a superhero and the first big Marvel superhero to ever be made into a good film. I yeah. will say good film because there are movies beforehand. Dolph Lundgren played the Punisher and oh God, that movie. Yeah. Sucked. David Hasselhoff is Nick Fury. Yeah. Uh, it's bad. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> yeah. Wesley Snipes as Blade was incredible. And if you watch black exploitation films and watch Kung Fu cinema, you see them in Blade. Yes. And that is my biggest concern, actually, with the upcoming Blade movie, because I worry that it won't have those callbacks. Very similar to Blade's origins as a comic book character. Blade's yes. origins as a comic book character were a direct result of black exploitation media and, mm -hmm. you know, kung fu film. And I, and I feel like that is going to be lost. Also, because they said that the new Blade movie is going to be PG-13, which I think is a travesty. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, ditto. Because, because it being PG-13 also goes against that kung fu craze and the black exploitation media because they are they are ultraviolet. Yeah, there, there's a grittiness and a, and a rawness to all of those films that, again, I think was coming out as an expression of what these films were trying to accomplish, right? And and, and um, many of them are filled with nudity because uh, for the, the length and breadth of American cinema, um, it was not allowed to see black bodies as sexy. You know, it was just not allowed. They weren't they they could not be sex symbols um, in 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 mainstream film with very few exceptions. And um, and so, again, a lot of these films are pushing this envelope and saying, hey, what can we get a, get away with? What can we demonstrate? Uh, you know, of course, a notable exception uh, to the nudity uh, is um, Cleopatra Jones. Which yep. is a film there was I no nudity in that movie. Loved. Yeah. Tamara Dobson, uh, who, who, by the way, uh, you know is over six feet tall and she's amazing as Cleopatra Jones. That car is so awesome. <laughs> yeah. Her, her, her Corvette is it's a, it's a Corvette stingray. I think Corvette Something stingray. Like yeah. And she's oh, got like cool. weapons hidden, hit, hidden in the doors and stuff like that. Like, like you said, James Bond style, but she, you know, she refused to do nudity, but she still has these moments where, you know, by today's standards, People would decry this scene where she's like walking down the street and people are like whistling at her and catcalling yeah. her and that sort of thing. But like it was so significant at that time because we're coming out of a time frame where um, um, black women could not be uh, objects of desire except for um, – in this weird kind of Jezebel archetype where they were like fetishized by white men in, in, in a lot of films and things like that. Um, and so uh, that movie is just, and, and not to mention the fact that, like you said, she's a government agent, she's a federal agent. And it's probably one of the first times I can remember going to a film and um, she, you know, there's these, this great scene where she goes in and um, she comes back and she, um, she's mad about what's been going on, kind of the central story of the plot that I won't ruin for anyone who's, who hasn't seen it. Uh, but there's this great scene where she calls like this, the white police captain, who's kind of her ally um, in the Los Angeles police force. And there's like, he, he, he knows she's mad about what's going on. And there's this visible fear in his face. And he's like, does she know I'm here? Can, you know, like he's trying to get out of like talking to her. And um, and then later on, there's a scene where she tells him, look, my jurisdiction runs from Watts Towers to Anchor or Turkey, like, you know, and and those are some moments that are so amazing, particularly at that time where here's this white police captain who's deferring to a black woman in the, in when, the early 1970s. Or when she takes out those assassins at the airport and she just flashes her badge and then walks away. And, she's and like, the cops are just clean kind of up after there. me. They're kind of like, uh, okay, what, what, what just happened? Yeah, those moments like are so small, but also so huge because, um, you know, they they put forward this ideal of the power of this strong black woman, right, who's not going to take anybody's mess, 
not even these white cops, right? And, you know, that's a message that resonates today, let alone 1973, you know, phenomenal, uh, just such an amazing film. But I think like these through threads that go through to um, like Ghost Dog, Way of the Samurai, um, through Last Dragon, through Blade, um, it shows this like this like line that continues through um, even unto today. And, and I hope I, I have the same fears as you do, but I, man, I, I have this hope in your mind that, that, that we'll be wrong about the new Blade. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, like fingers crossed. 